Hello everyone, today I'm here to do another Recent Reads video for you. So if you don't know, it's literally what the title says, Recent Reads. I tried to do three to five um, books I've read recently and talk about them. Today is going to be all YA books because for some reason I've been wanting to read a ton of YA. I've been in the YA mood and I'm not hating that. So I have, a def I have a lot of different genres, so bear with me. As always, if you're interested in these videos, what I do is tell you about the books, what I liked about them, what I didn't like about them, and my rating, and they're all spoiler free. And I will leave timestamps down below if you want to hear about one book in particular. So without further ado, let's get on to the books I am talking about today. So the books I will be talking about today are The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes, A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik, and Breathless by Jennifer Niven. So first up, like I said, we're going to talk about The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. So I'm not going to lie to you, this was a thousand percent a cover buy. You know when you're in the store and you see a really good cover and you go, okay, and then you read the synopsis on the back and you're like, okay, and then you buy it. That's pretty much the story of how I bought this book. So I saw the cover, liked it, the synopsis sounded really cool. It kind of is pitched as Knives Out the movie meets Sadie the book, kind of like a mystery thriller going on with some games in it. And I have to say I actually enjoyed it. I was going into this with an expectation of not that much but just to have a good time and I do feel like it delivered on that front. So in this book we have a character named Avery and Avery does not have a lot of money. It's always been her and her mom and her mother has passed away so she's living with her half-sister. They share the same dad and you know she's super smart in school. She's just trying to make it to like hopefully get a scholarship and things like that. And then one day at school this guy comes and he's like oh yeah my grandfather that just died, who's like a freaking billionaire, left you like everything. And she's like, what? And you as a reader are like, what's happening? Is this her grandfather? No, apparently they're not related at all. It's some literally random person that has is a billionaire that left Avery all of these things. She travels to Texas where this guy lives and she meets all of his grand um, and she meets all of his grandsons who are kind of within her age. There's four of them and the whole family is kind of reeling of why didn't he leave them anything? Like why didn't they leave him like all of his money, all of his estates and all that stuff? Why did he leave it to some random girl that literally nobody knows? So what goes on from there, this is like a huge mansion that she's in and she has to figure out why she was left this money, who is this guy, figure out her relationship with these um, guys, all these grandsons, and in the back of your head you're like, are they related or not related? Like, how did she get this money? And it's just kind of like a, a cat and mouse, like a, just a game, like a puzzle game, you know? You figure out one clue, then you go to another, and then another, and another. So it was a really fun read. Was it amazing? Not really. So if you're going into this thinking, it's gonna, I really apologize for the lighting today. It is about to rain, so the sun's just like shifting in and out. It's doing its thing. We're gonna have to work with Mother Nature here. So I'd say if you're interested in this book, just go into it with not a lot of expectations. Just go into it and have a fun time. It's kind of a YA version of, you know, Clue or Knives Out without like the murder, but just with a lot of money, a real social, like a real rich family that's definitely spoiled and all that stuff and it was fun reading about the manor and finding all these clues and things like that so I ended up giving it a three out of five and I do believe there's a sequel that has to be the way they ended it and I do plan to finish I do plan to read the sequel because I just had such a fun time with this book. I went into it thinking it wasn't going to be a five star. I just thought it was going to be just a good palate cleanser, just kind of a fun read because I read this right after like October when all of the spooky season ended and I read like a ton of like mystery thriller horror books that were so kind of just, they're amazing but they get depressing. <laughs> And this was just the perfect palate cleanser in my opinion. So, so if you just want a fun book that just has a good time and you're not, it's not too much if that makes any sense, I would recommend this. I liked it. It's not a favorite but I do have fond memories of it and I thought it was just a fun read as I continually keep on saying. So yeah, three out of five. I put it right in the middle of the road. I enjoyed it. You know, I guess it could compare to kind of the dark academia thing, which I love to say, but I still kind of quite understand. It's like kind of like a dark school kind of vibe. I guess you could pair that with it. You've got a mansion, you figure out clues, things like that. I would compare it to that. I don't know. Moving on to A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. So I attempted to read Spinning Silver and fun fact is I might buy it again. I might have to buy it again because <laughs> I got rid of it, but 
I DNF'd it. I got to like a quarter, maybe close to halfway through, and I just had to stop reading it because while I was enjoying it, it was just so slow. And I always had thoughts that I would return to this author one day, and here we are with our newest book, A Deadly Education. So I read this one, and I have to say I really enjoyed it, but I do have some qualms with it. So this book is going to be so complicated to explain, so I'm going to try my best because I'm sure... I will butcher it and people in the comments will be like, you didn't explain it well and you're probably gonna be right so I apologize in advance for my explanation of it. In this book we follow a character named Galadriel, Galadriel, but she goes by L, and she attends this school called the Scalamans, the Scalamans. So many pronunciations are probably doing wrong. In fact, I think this is the first book in, yeah, book one of the Scalamans. Scalamance. And so the Scalamance is a magic school. You know, this book is being compared a lot to Harry Potter. Do I think it is that? I'll talk about that more later. So the Scalamance is pretty much this magic school and it's not just a regular magic school like you know Hogwarts and stuff. This magic school is like tough. Like in order to graduate you have to literally live and like make it through the first four years of high school and then like make the graduation ceremony and basically the school there's just monsters and demons all in it that could just eat kids any other day and you know you have to be on your wits constantly the school does not care about you you don't walk alone in the corridors the places can end up at you, you know your class could end up in a completely different place it, the whole structure of the school is kind of like it's underground the whole structure of the school is kind of like these cogs so as you first get into the Scholomance as a freshman, you're at the very top, but each year you move down. And down the further down you go, the more demons and kind of bad things are until you get to the senior level. And then in graduation, they like open the door to all the demons of like this maze. And if you make it, great, you graduated. And if not, you might be dead. <laughs> so it's a very like it's not a regular school. It's like a school where like survival to the fittest quite literally. So we follow Galadriel who is in her junior year and she's a loner. A lot of people in this school uh, have enclaves where they're like kind of tied to different cities and they kind of share all these powers and each kind of, I don't know what to call them, like a wizard, just magician, I don't know, but each person, let's just say that, has an infinity, like usually with their powers. Elle's infinity is mass destruction. Like, she cannot help it. Like, that is her infinity. Like, she could blow down a whole city in the blink of an eye. But, you know, it's not your typical magic where you have a wand and you have endless magic or if you just say a spell, things like that. In this book, you have to harness the magic. So you use that by using mana, which makes me think of World of Warcraft so insanely much when I was really into it. So so you have to build mana constantly and you can blow all your mana with a single spell, you know, because the power for spell. But there's also a darker side to that where you can use Malia, which is kind of a dark side. And then with that, you become, you can become a Maleficer, hopefully I pronounced that right, which is kind of the dark kind of side of magic where you can steal people's like energy and use it for Malia. So, you know, Gladriel's always kind of known that she's tiptoeing on the evil side. She doesn't want to be evil, but her grandmother's always prophesied that she's going to be like the destruction of everything. So she's always been trying to play by the rules, do the right thing, just make it into a graduation. And she's a loner. And then she meets Orion. Orion has been with her like in this class since they were freshmen. And he is quintessentially Harry Potter. He saves everybody countless, countless times again. He fights the fights. His affinity is like um, battle magic and things like that. And he's just like the all-star. Everybody who's everybody loves Orion. Everyone's been saved by Orion. In the beginning of this book, Ladro gets saved by Orion and she is quite frankly pissed about it. She's like, crap, I don't want to be saved by this guy. I hate him. I can't stand that everybody likes him. So a lot of people also compare this to like a Draco Malfoy Harry Potter thing going on, which I guess I could see that. I don't know, technically. Elle's just snarky. She is a snarky main character. She's not an evil main character by any means. This girl's just trying to make it in this school, so I can't blame her. She doesn't have a lot of friends, so she doesn't really like Oriah because everything's been easy for him. You know, he saves everybody, and she's just like, I'm just trying to make it in the school. Basically, in this book, they become friends, and they discover more about the school, and so on and so forth. That's kind of like the muddled down version of it even though I felt like I took five minutes explaining it. Ugh, that's not even the thick of it. So I would give this book a four out of five. I did really enjoy it. It is very info dumpy. By that I mean like Galadriel could say one thing where you know this is what I 
did. And then she goes on three pages explaining kind of the backstory of that, of the magic and things like that. So Naomi Novik really delves into the backstory, the kind of of how the school came to be, how magic came to be, how Mana and Malia came to be, how you can make it in the school. You know, she really tells you a lot about it. And at certain times, I enjoyed it. And other times, I was like, this is a lot. Like, this is getting too info dumpy. And it it dragged on for me. I'm not gonna lie to you. But what saved it for me was the main characters, Elle and Orion. I love their banter back and forth, how they became friends, how Elle eventually made some friends and realized that she could rely on other people. And it was just interesting. This school, as weird and horrible as it is, it is very interesting. Like, I will continue to read on with the series because I'm not gonna lie, I was invested. Like, by 75%, I was like, I, I was really thinking about the characters when I wasn't reading about it, wondering what was going to happen by the end of the book. And I just, I did really like it. But I could see a lot of people not liking it because of just the sheer amount of information that's in it. But I think with fantasy books especially, and then with magic, you have to lay down a lot of like ground rules, information, things like that. But it got to be a lot. <laughs> but I did enjoy it. I do know there is a controversial um, statement in here about dreadlocks that the author put in here and I do believe it's in this book because I read it so I do believe she has realized the error in that and the what she has said was um offensive and I believe she has taken it out of the books I don't know future books I'm not quite sure but I do want you to be aware of that before going into it she makes basically a harmful comment about dreadlocks which I don't agree with I don't think anybody agrees with but she has taken upon herself to correct it I believe Hopefully I'm correct on that, but I do want to let you know that. So I would definitely say this is definitely a dark academia book. If you want a book that's like dark, that's school and all that stuff, this is great. But does it have the fashion sense of dark academia? No, because several times else, like I had to cut my hair because it might get covered in like demon juice. And like she's wearing the same shirt for like weeks because she has to build enough mana to make another shirt. Like this is, this school is rough. If you make it through the school, you can make it through anything. Let me just say that. So I'm very, very interested to see how her senior year is going to play out, what the relationship with her and Orion's going to be, because it's kind of got that slow building hate to love, which I love so much. And I don't know, I really liked it. The more I'm talking about it, the more I'm like, it's a five out of five. But no, it's not. It's like a four and a half for me. It was almost there. It just wasn't. But I did really enjoy it. The last book I want to talk about is Breathless by Jennifer Niven. This is her third book and I have read her first two. I've read All the Bright Places a long time ago. Controversial book I would say because it deals with a lot of um, mental health, suicide and things like that. I... <sighs> I haven't seen the Netflix adaptation. Um, I'm just behind on watching things. And I don't know. I don't know if I plan to watch it. I don't know if I plan to reread it. And I had read her other one. I think it was called um, Holding Up the Universe, which I didn't really like. So this one, again, was almost a cover buy for me because I do enjoy the cover. And the synopsis sounded really good. So in this book, we follow a character named Claudette, Claude, who is about to graduate high school and she's gonna go on a road trip with her best friend for the summer everything's going great she's going to new york for high for college and then basically one day her dad comes in and is like hey me and your mom are separating and you know just to let you know that and so her and her mom go to georgia in this island off of georgia that's like so remote like cell phones don't even work out there and so they go there for the summer and she's very angry about it because her parents have always been her strong root she's always known her parents to have such an amazing marriage and she doesn't know who she is without that so this is her whole summer two months of like exploring who she is she meets a guy named jeremiah there who is very um, just kind of outdoorsy, does his own thing, plays by his own rules, and things happen from there. I just finished this as a, um, as a filming, I just finished this today, so I'm still trying to wrap my head around what I rated it. Right now, it's at a three for me. I don't think it's gonna be a four, because I liked it, I just didn't love it. Again, this could be an age thing, I've said time and time again. I do like YA books, but there are some YA books where I really feel my age shows and this one is one of them you know because I am 32 and the main characters in this book were 17 18 and you know they were still exploring who they were exploring their sexuality and things like that but I did really I did enjoy it I did like the romance between her and Jeremiah how kind of he was like an outcast boy that has a troubled past that doesn't talk and they kind of had this summer romance that 
did end sadly. I think I was very sad by the end of this book because it's kind of bittersweet and I don't love bittersweet endings. I like open ending, open endings, which I could see this one being, but to me it was more bittersweet. Like I, I'm not gonna lie, I tried to read the end of the book. I was like, crap, this is bitter, this is kind of sad. <laughs> it wasn't like overly sad. It was just kind of that bittersweet sad. I mean, it's a great summer read about a girl discovering her life, her love, her sexuality all in a summer and discovering about her parents and herself. So I did enjoy it. I just don't know if Jennifer Niven's one of my favorite authors. She's a solid author but I just haven't found a book of hers that I just love. This one was okay. I just didn't love Claudette so much. Like she was a little bit catty at times for me but the topics and messages in this book I did really enjoy. So I would recommend it probably. So yeah, those were the three books that I talked about today. You have one about a school that's literally trying to kill you. You have one where a girl comes into money and she has to figure out why. And you have one about a girl that goes off to an island for a summer and discovers who she is. So all very different things. I'd love to hear if you've read any of these and what your thoughts are. Also, if you want me to do a more in-depth talk about A Deadly Education, I totally can because I feel like I could talk about it more because there's just so much to unpack in this 300 page book with the magic system and the school and my thoughts of what's going to happen and things like that. So let me know about that. But again, I would love to hear your thoughts. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.